Hi, welcome to Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong reporting from Washington, D.C. In 2005, the Pentagon logged more than 79,000 attempted intrusions into their network. About 1,300 were successful, including the penetration of computers linked to the Army's 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions and the 4th Infantry Division. In August and September that year, Chinese hackers penetrated U.S. State Department computers in several parts of the world. Hundreds of computers had to be replaced or taken offline for months. Jim McLinick, a retired Pentagon computer network analyst, told Time magazine that the Chinese military holds hacking competitions to identify and recruit talented members for its cyber army. According to Chinese military documents and general speeches, China's ambitions extend to crippling an enemy's financial, military, and communications capabilities early in a conflict. A Pentagon assessment states that China's military regards offensive computer operations as critical to seize the initiative in the first stage of a war. Cyber attacks by China have become so frequent and aggressive that President Bush raised the subject with Hu Jintao, the Chinese president, when they met in Sydney at the APEC summit. Mr. Hu denied that China was responsible for the attack. Is there truly a cyber war? If so, who is winning? I'm joined today by Larry Greenblatt, lead instructor for Internetwork Defense and Information Security Training in a consulting company. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Don. Now, do you think uh, in my opening remark, am I sounding too alarm here? I don't think so. Uh, I, I get to work with uh, many government employees and, and contractors, and they echo much of what you just said. That there was a big concern, uh, especially over the last uh, 18 months, that China's really stepped up their attacks and probing and just everywhere on our internet, as far as we could see. So, is this accurate for me to say it's a cyber war? It's that serious. If it's not a cyber war yet, it is definitely the beginning of a cyber war. So, I don't know where to draw the, the you know, the line. Are we waiting for some digital Pearl Harbor to signal the uh, the beginning of it? So, so what, what can the hacker do? I mean. They take your personal identity or they take off electricity. What can they do? They can do a number of those things that you just mentioned. Uh, SCADA systems where um, the, the physical interface to, to the uh, Internet. So in other words, uh, we have power plants, for example, mm -hmm. that are run uh, via Internet-based applications. So one concern is that people be able to uh, take over the power plants. Um, but it, it doesn't end there. Think about since since 1987, more money has been uh, represented in electronics than in any other form. So when you think about what is money, people tend to think of paper or gold even. But it's not true. As of 1987, it's mostly electronic. Mm -hmm. So uh, the wealth of the world is at stake. So w w when we talk about hacking, my understanding of hacking is people from China or other country they can log into our network as our legitimate users and pretend as us. And how do they do that? And don't we have firewalls? Don't we have control like that to prevent them from getting We do our best. Here? We do our best. But think about um, there, there's a, a principle called Six Sigma. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a quality control system that, that says, um, uh, well, Six Sigma itself is a metric saying that if you hit theoretically perfect quality, that for every million somethings, you'd have 3.4 uh, defects. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's pretty good when you're talking about manufacturing, say, uh, uh, clothing. You know, that's, a, that's a great target. Mm -hmm. But when your operating system or an application has millions and millions of lines of code, even if we were to have perfect, theoretically, six sigma level of uh, quality, we would still have thousands of potential defects in our software. It's just so difficult to make something perfect when you have millions of parts. I see. So you're saying that uh, because we have so complicated computer program control our daily lives, there's always some flaws there, and the people can take advantage of that. Exactly. And, and we cannot do anything about it. We can look for the well-known flaws. Once something uh, is exposed, then we can try and patch that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's theoretically impossible to close all these doors. And perhaps the worst uh, uh, thing is, is um, these invalid input attacks. So what happens is uh, in a, um, uh, a computer database, they ask you, enter your name. Mm -hmm. They don't always check to see that you entered in just your name. You might enter in a million characters, so that would be a buffer overflow. Uh, and they can overwrite 
computer information. Or they could just, what's your name? And my name is the SQL command to change prices in the database. And these invalid input attacks work every day. So if you uh, go to nvd.nist.gov, the National Vulnerability Database, every day they report some new discovered vulnerability, and it's almost always an invalid input. Hmm, so now, looks like there is a war or competition, a fierce competition going on, and who's winning these days? It's hard for me to gauge that. I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'd like to think who's going to win is these young children that actually uh, sit above uh, what, what's going on in, in any country's national interest, but their international interests uh, is what I'm hoping that they'll protect. So right now, the kids are a little confused. They're feeling uh, the roads out, and they see the, the folly maybe in the, uh, the old ways, but they're maybe a little misguided into how to, how to handle their skills. But I believe that they're going to eventually uh, rise above this situation. Currently, though, before these kids grow up, there are rumors that China is basically at the top of the peak here. Well, what do you mean they are at the top of the peak? Because they are so technologically advanced or they have more manpower or more money? Both. I don't know necessarily money, but they certainly have the manpower. We have a difficult time recruiting our children to, to be engineers, and they have a, a much greater pool now to choose from. So that's a big challenge. That's probably our toughest challenge. I don't think it's money per se.